Hallelujah. Are you expectant tonight? Are you hungry? Hunger in the spirit is not depravity of God. It's an obsession for more of him. Are you hungry? Again, it's my privilege to be here. I count it a great honor to come talk to God's people. So you need to be careful. <laughs> I'm leaving here for Sokoto tomorrow. I'll return to Maraba next tomorrow. Meanwhile, my wedding is in five days' time, in ten days' time. So you keep moving. If you are not careful, you juxtapose things. <laughs> it's a great honor, sir. I honor you so greatly. It's a very senior minister of God, and I count it a privilege to be here. Please lift your hands toward heaven and talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord to open up your spirit to receive the eternal counsel of his spirit. I told us yesterday that it's easy for God to give to a generation, but when it comes to making, it takes time. Most times men are carried through the furnace. God will have to melt the elements of your soul so that he can recouple you. That's the only way he can precipitate the corruption and the influence of this generation that have found expression in your soul. He carries you through the flames of fire. He burns you. These are the seasons when you pray and it looks as if your prayers have no answer. What is happening is that you are going through the furnace. God is trying to, re, to, re, to recalibrate your soul structure. The making process is hard. But that is when strong men are formed. That's where warriors are formed. That's when we learn to carry the weapons of the spirit and to wield them in time. So that we can establish the government of God on the face of the earth. Can you ask the Lord tonight? It's a making process. It's a making process. So sometimes it looks very hard. It looks as if people are being attacked. No. It's a chiseling process. God will have to shape you because God doesn't build with blocks. He builds with stones. And when God builds with stones, most times stones are chiseled. They are chiseled. He will, he will shape things of your life so that you can be fired into the city of Zion. Can we ask the Lord tonight to help us? That we may hear the eternal counsel of God, not in our minds, but in our spirits. Because it may not make sense when you hear it. But when he enters your spirit man, he has a way of allowing God a fuse out of Zion and infuse into your soul. Marakado Feradai. Lelahizo Savandra Kavati. Ha ha. Ha ha. Maravonde Haziza Hadiata Era do diavo la mania che zozove Randi capato savradila talianda tavaya Rakiba bazondo rebecadia zozane Thank you Father Thank you Father Let your word come like the dew For we are willing to receive To be instructed Bring marching orders tonight. We love you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. I want to start gradually. <laughs> A friend of mine told me, he said, don't just go high. 
He said, carry everybody there. Well, sometimes when you come into the service, you are high. You need to carry everybody along. So I want to start very low tonight. And I believe God will help us. It was my Moreau that said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, he said, abuse is inevitable. What we are trusting God for tonight is to help us understand the meaning of existence so that we can set our priorities aright even as we journey through time. Because the truth is that the way life did not begin in time, it will not end in time. We came from the regions of eternity. And when we are done with our purpose on the face of the earth, we will still step out of the envelope of time back to eternity. So if we live our lives neglecting the eternal realities of God, it means we have not understood the meaning of existence. And so tonight, I'm trusting the Lord that he will help us to gaze into Zion and look upon the things that pertain to our peculiar callings, the demands of our ordination, and align with the matching order of the Spirit, even as we fine-tune with the frequencies of God. Not only to make meaning in time, but when we get to eternity, like Paul, we will say we have finished our course. There remained for us a crown of life. We will receive the glories of eternity and we will live with our king forever and ever. You know, when I started contemplating marriage, the Lord asked me, what is the purpose of marriage? And the thoughts of the things that were taught began to run through my mind. You know, we hear things like, marry who you love. Um, it's about happiness. Make sure you are happy. And all of these are very beautiful. But the Lord said to me, he said, does he sit, does marriage sit on these things? Because you can be happy with somebody that is not going in the direction of your destiny. If you have not found your destiny. Because the things that make men happy are strange. <laughs> The things that make men happy, they are strange. And God began to give me some secret things that I've never heard preached anywhere. You know, he told me the first purpose of marriage is to give you the privilege to be conformed to the image of God. He said, that is why you will not find who you want to marry on the street. You will walk on that person. You will cultivate that person. And while you are cultivating that person, yourself will be cultivated in the process. So you may be looking for a woman that is patient. Meanwhile, her impatience is what will help you to learn temperance and endurance. So when God points at your wife, your wife may not have patience. So if you are looking for marriage to be happy, and you think happiness is about patience, you will miss your wife. Because the idea is that you will be conformed to the image of Christ. Meanwhile, the endurance that you don't have is her patience that will teach you that endurance. So God will deliberately allow you to marry her, and it may take you six years to cultivate endurance. And you will learn it by teaching her. That's a school of the spirit. So he said, the, the, a higher purpose of marriage is for you to be conformed to the image of God. So that happiness will be, will be captured in fulfillment, not in excitement. It is when you have cultivated her and the glory in her spirit begins to emanate. That's when you'll be fulfilled. It's in that fulfillment that you'll be happy. And I, I never saw it anywhere. So I began to, you know, I used to love tall and fair dancers. <laughs> and my goal of happiness was to find a woman without blemish. <laughs> when I went to pray, I gazed into the spirit and I contemplated a tall and elegant damsel, flawless in expression. <laughs> he said, what I'm looking for is for you to be conformed to the image of God. So it changed my paradigm. So when the purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse is inevitable. He told me the second purpose of marriage is to preserve divine heritage. He said the reason you could trace Jesus back to Adam is because God trapped that divine order in a bloodline. So when men hide things, they hide them in a bank. But when God hides things, he hides it in men. So the choices of marriage 
is to help transfer eternal ordinations from one generation to another. So it is God's way of hiding dimensions of the spirit. So God will prefer you marry someone with a godly heritage than to marry a, 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 a diva. Because God is trapping an ordination. And only in such vessels can eternal ordination be captured. I said, wow. <laughs> I was not ready to marry. If I married five years ago, my wife would have been a goddess. But my ministry would have ended. It would have ended by now. <laughs> he said, the third purpose of marriage is worship. He said, because it is in finding your wife that you will learn how to bend your will. Because worship is not a good song. Worship is the ability to conform to the will of the Father. So it is no, it's not what I desire. It's what you desire. Not my will, but thine. And he said, it's a marriage that you will discover that. <laughs> I said, wow. So when the purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse is inevitable. He said, the fourth purpose of marriage is so that you can learn the mystery of oneness. That's the mystery that holds the Godhead together. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The ability to live and become one. And that was why he said, for the woman, love is submission. And they say, for the man, love is sacrifice. So everything the woman has, she relinquishes it. And it looks as if she's vulnerable. And then everything the man has, it commands the man to lavish it on the woman. So at the end of the day, nobody owns nothing. And as they grow on that corridor, a point come, the woman is lost in the man and the man is lost in the woman. So the mystery of divinity can be manifested in their home. So when you step into their family, their family become heaven on earth. Because God dwells there. You know, when you come on the altar, you can coordinate yourself. You can't do that with your wife. Your wife knows you. So when you are trying to, be, to act wise, they will say, this man is a hypocrite. I know. <laughs> And when you look at the face of the woman, you can tell who that man is. When oneness is achieved, alignment is achieved. So that man, his communication frequency with his wife will become heightened. When he looks at that woman, he is saying much, much, much more than words can ever articulate. That's a mystery. It's only in the Godhead that you find such mystery. That the son can be on earth. He knows what the father is doing in heaven. It's oneness. He said the fifth purpose is priesthood. He said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So when we, our gathering tonight is to help us understand why we were called. Why we were called. Why God summoned us. And what he brought us to achieve for him on the face of the earth. Because God did not call us for the formality of a call. Because if it was about the formality when you come to church... And you are excited that would have been enough but there is something god wants to achieve that is deeper than our excitement even though our excitement is part of it because he gave us emotion if it was not necessary he wouldn't have given us the emotion he gave us but beyond it there is something god wants to achieve and that was why last night we began our journey by by, by understanding who god is and we said before time was god existed because god dwelt in himself in fact, the name God means self-existent one. So he doesn't need nothing to be God. The difference between you and God is that he doesn't need you to be God, but you need him to be human. So before creation ever was, God was. Before the spirit realm was created, he existed in himself. So God was both him and he was the house of God. Because God lived as God and he lived in God. And he needed nothing to be God. But a point came when love compelled him. And on the strength of the, 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 the push and the insistence of love, God decided to begin to extend the civilization that was in his inside. He began to extend it so that he could interact with what is in him, outside of him. So the idea behind creation, the 20 and 4 elders told us, is that all things should please God. So what was happening between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, he wanted to extend it beyond his boundaries. So that he could interact with other beings outside of him. That was why he, he began the project of creation. So that when he interacts with the angelic, that which happened in the community of the Godhead can happen outside of the community of the Godhead. That was why creation was designed. And we said for creation to be accurate, we must go back to understand 
what is it that governed the civilization of God? And we said there were three things that governed the civilization of God. The first is the will of the Father. The second is the wisdom of the Father. And the third is the purpose of the Father. Everything we do is dictated by our alignment with these three realities. If the will of the Father is not part of what you are doing, you didn't survive. If the wisdom of the Father does not govern what you do, you did not exist. And if you did not fulfill the purpose of the Father, you did not pass through time. Because there is no way you can please Him unless you articulate His will. You live by His wisdom and you fulfill His purpose. This is what life is about. And we said for us to be able to understand these realities, we must live on earth perpetually connected to heaven. Because if you are not connected to heaven, you can never tell what God is doing by time. The accuracy of Jesus' life is his ability to stay connected to heaven. So at all times, he knew what the Father was doing. Jesus could walk the earth and tell you what the Father was doing at a time. And he said, the words I speak, it is the Father that is in me that doeth the work. So what Jesus was doing was not a product of creativity. It was a product of alignment. It was a product of yieldedness to the government of Zion. So as Jesus walked the face of the earth, he was streaming God. The way you live stream the internet now, that was how Jesus was live streaming God. So he said, God, who had sound three times, and in diverse manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet, has in this last day spoken unto us by his son, who been the brightness of his glory. The word glory is the word doxa. That means the essence of God. So Jesus mirrored the essence of God. When Jesus shows up, his life was like a theater through which you can watch God. When Jesus is talking, you are watching God. When Jesus is walking, you are watching God. It was a theater that revealed God because he was living on earth from heaven. And he said he upheld all things by the word of his power. The only way you can be accurate on earth is when you stream heaven. So our emphasis last night was how to connect to heaven. And we said the first way to live on earth accurately is to be able to pick signals from the spirit. To be able to pick signals so when a believer is not picking signals from the spirit, he's lost. It's just like you are flying in the air and suddenly your compass begins to malfunction. Ah, there's crisis. The, pay, the plane will vanish. Or if you go out of the radar, you are lost. You can be flying and flying very high. But right there at that altitude, you are lost. You know, when a plane is lost, it's not because it crashed most of the time. It stepped out of radar. You no longer pick the frequencies of Zion. And when people fail to pick that frequency, it's impossible for them to please God. Because they don't know what God is doing. They are assuming. But you can't do trade by battle with the spirit. And we say when you begin to pick signals from heaven, the first thing that happens to you is that the burden of God comes upon you. So when you come to church, like daddy was saying, you now look at the empty chairs. You were worshipping God. And suddenly a signal comes to your spirit. And then you see that the father was grieved. That men are not worshipping. The moment you pick that signal, that will become your body. Next Sunday, you can't come to church alone. Whether you like it or not, that signal you pick to become a body on your life. You can be in church and suddenly the keyboard is not working. And somebody else is saying, what is wrong with the keyboard? What is wrong with the keyboard now? Why? 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 Meanwhile, when you checked, you now discover the father was excited with the worship. All of a sudden, the father is now grieved. Because you pick that signal. Even if it's the last money you have saved, you will buy a keyboard next Sunday. Others will not understand why you are doing what you are doing. You are functioning by a signal. Because when you capture a signal from the spirit, it becomes important. That burden is the fuel that powers your service to God. The reason many people get exhausted and rusty is because they stop picking signals. They stop picking signals. So when men come and talk to them, it can deplete their, their desire to push on with God. So men must pick signals. Men must articulate bodies. And when men articulate bodies, we said the third thing that happened is that the hunger for the presence of God is quickened in their spirit because they want more. They want more. They want more. They want to have more of God. They want to hear more of God. They want to see more of God. Because when a spirit reveals himself to you, <laughs> nothing will matter to you anymore. You know, the reason why lost easily finds expression in our soul is because we have not seen him that is eternal. The Bible said, the reason Moses was able to abandon Egypt was because he saw him that was invincible. When a man sees God, when a man begins to pick vibrations from the realm of God, it becomes difficult for that man to focus on earth. In fact, discipline is not the ability to get things done. <laughs> discipline is the ability... <laughs> 
if I divide things from the realm of God, it will be strange. Discipline is the ability not to allow yourself to be wooed into heaven so that you can be relevant on earth. Because sometimes when you go to God's presence, you can stand there for three days. Your work will suffer. So what discipline will do to you is your ability to know how to allocate time for God and also to do the things God will have you do. Because when you get there, you can be lost. Did you remember when the cloud came upon Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration? Peter said, let's build three tents here. One for you, one for Elijah, one for Moses. Peter forgot he has a family. <laughs> you won't go back. See, the reason you come to God's presence and you are tired, you have not seen him. When you see him, you have to tell yourself, I need to feed my children. Because if you stay there, you will never go. So when a man begins to pick signals from heaven, hunger is born. Hunger. So he comes and he wants more. He wants more. It's not about the things God gives now. It's about God himself. When these three things are happening to you, it means you are alive in the spirit. It means you have overcome the world. Because he said, whoever is born of God, he overcomes the world. He overcomes the world. The way to overcome the world is to be detached. You are connecting to another frequency. When you see a madman, a madman is actually a visible reflection of a man that is in league with the spirit. He is so drawn to the realm that he walks with that. A madman can come and look at the sun and he will be there for two hours. He is in another realm. So even the rays of the sun can affect him because he is more, the realm is gazing at his more read than the sun. So you can wake up during Hamatan, very cold, and then you see a madman jogging by 5 a.m. And having the best of times. Where he's hearing the music from, you don't know. He's playing in his spirit. He's in another realm. You are saying, this guy is naked. Is he not cold? Even if a snake bites that man, he will just throw it away. And he's doing what he's doing. He's saturated and dominated by another realm. A madman is a proof of a spiritual man. He is so spiritual that he's lost in that realm. He picks signals from that realm. He's energized by that realm. And he lives for that realm. If he sees the spirit powering him on a, on a waste bin, he will sit there comfortably. That's why I told you yesterday, your house is not the building you live in. It's the atmosphere of God that you create around you. So that madman can sit on a bowler and he's having fun. On the trash, you will say, is this place is smelly. He, he's not perceiving it. The realm is, con is connected to us, overwhelmed him. That's what spirituality is. We know God so much that when God is happy, we can pick it. When God is sad, we can pick it. When God wants something done, we can pick it. And the moment we pick it, it becomes our motivation. We won't stop until we get it done. When you get there, then God can use you. Because nothing can distract you again. Nothing. God has colonized you. You have overcome the world. Because if you can't overcome the world, it means the devil can still bargain with you. And I tell you, the bargain of the devil is sweet. If you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Lost of the flesh. If you are the son of God, look at the glory of the world. I will give it to you. Lost of the eyes. If you are the son of God, jump. You will not cast thy feet against a stone. Angels will hold you up. Pride of life. If the devil brings a bargain, it is only a man who is, who is dead to this realm that can overcome this world. And when he overcomes this world, the proof is not that he's disciplined and he's motivating himself that he will not fall. He will not fall. Resolutions are not strong enough. The only way you can survive is when you are connected. You must be vitally connected to heaven. That's the emphasis God brought our way yesterday. And tonight, there's yet another emphasis that God wants to bring to us. I have 35 minutes. Ah! You know, some of us who are revivalists, we just allow God flow. When it's flowing, it's when we ascend that we begin to do business. So I can just be on when I ascend, my message comes to me. That's how we flow. I love pastors. You know what I shared yesterday? God's servant came up and when he was splitting it out, is that what I said? <laughs> is that what I said? You know, they, they are masters, they are builders, they build men. We set people on fire and allow them. But you can preach one message, a pastor and a teacher can preach seven messages out of that one message. Because his goal is not to get everybody, it's to build. 
is to build. I celebrate you, sir. The second emphasis God wants to bring to us tonight is growth. The Bible said in Galatians 4.1, it said the heir, so long as he's a child, he said, different nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. He said, therefore, the father places him under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. The time appointed of the father is when the, the child is able to handle kingdom. The love of the father is intact, but he can never commit kingdom to the child. Just the way you love your child so much, in fact, is the pride of your existence. But as much as you love him, you can't give him a car at the age of five. It's not because the car is too precious, but if you give him that car, it will kill him. So the reason you don't give him the car is because you love him. So on account of the love of the father, he withholds things from us until we grow up. And if we are talking kingdom business, if we are talking kingdom leadership, then growth becomes a very integral part of our consideration. There are three cadres of growth in the kingdom. You grow from a child to a son, and you grow from a son to a father. That's the individual strand of growth. The second strand of growth is a corporate strand. You grow from a citizen to a representative, an ecclesia. And then you grow from an ecclesia to a witness. That's a martyr. A martyr is one who has come to a point where he's not only representing what he, he believes in, but he's willing to die for it. That's why Paul said, I die daily. So the first strand of growth is from a child to a son, from a son to a father. The second strand of growth is from a citizen. When you are born, you don't become a member of the kingdom. You become a citizen of the kingdom. A member has privileges. A citizen has rights. So when I come praying for the sick, I'm not begging God to heal the sick. I am commanding the sickness to go. Because as a, as a citizen, I have the authority to address sickness. But if I were a member, I will come begging God to touch somebody. I will come begging God to heal somebody. When I come to make demand in heaven, I am not coming to beg. I'm coming to take because I have a right. So in the kingdom, you are a citizen, not a member. And when you become a citizen and you grow from a citizen, you become a representative. A representative is what we call the ecclesia. The ecclesia is not a number-based reality. It is an, it's a responsibility-based reality. So in the Roman kingdom, when the Roman government wants to take a territory, they send an agent, three agents, one in the military, the other in the legislative arm of the government, and the order in the executive arm, the representative of the king. So you have a herald, you have a pilot, and then you have a centurion. These three is what makes the ecclesia. When they send the ecclesia to a territory, the job of the ecclesia is to colonize that territory until that territory become a replica of the Roman kingdom. So you become a citizen, you have rights, and then a point comes, God entrusts responsibilities on you, and God sends you out. This kingdom that you have seen, go and model it in another place. You have grown from a citizen to an ecclesia. And a point comes because you have been so saturated by that assignment, you are willing to die for it. So put vis-a-vis -vis with your life. The assignment is more relevant than your life. So if you have to die to prove it, you die. And death in this context is not necessarily being slaughtered death in this context is self-denial self-denial you are willing to give up all all at all times at all times but if a man is not grown when it comes to god he wants to take he's a citizen he's not a martyr a martyr and the third strand of growth can i even handle that this time is just fighting but when i look at the time i come back to it <laughs> I'm talking so fast. I'm, I'm racing against time. Hmm. So when you look at yourself in this kingdom, what God can commit to you is dependent on your growth level. If you are a child, there are things you can't do. No matter how God loves you, until you grow to a son and you grow to a father, if you are a citizen, even though you have all the rights, there are many things God can't commit to your hand. 
and growth is not a function of time in the kingdom it's a function of process because you can be in the kingdom for 20 years and you, you refuse process if you refuse process you'll be in the kingdom for 30 years a man who embraces process in one year can become your elder brother and then you are wondering i've been here for 20 years how come pastor didn't see me it's not about how long you have been here it's about the degree to which process have worked on you so growth in the kingdom is process based not time based so because we are leaders tonight i want to show us the qualities that our lives give expression to as a testament of our growth level in the kingdom so we'll begin with the first strand a child who is a child in the kingdom a child in the kingdom is one that have understood the finished works of christ and have embraced it in its totality that's who a child is so on the strength of this understanding first he has an identity in god not in himself secondly he believes and relies completely in the love of the father and thirdly he has come into rest with god that's who a child is that's why a child has boldness he has boldness not because he is so strong he has boldness because he knows that his father is so strong so when you ask the child who are you he doesn't define himself in himself he defined himself in who he is in the father his identity is in the father and the only way you come into that place in the kingdom is because jesus has given you an identity so if you still see a man that trusts in himself he's not a child in the kingdom if you see a man that believes in his strength he has not entered the kingdom because he doesn't know how to survive in this kingdom the way to excel in this kingdom is to tap the energy of God and live by it so a child has an identity in God and the way he gains that identity is by, is by birth he knows that he is he was born of God so when you ask him who are you he said I am of God that was why John said you are of God little children you are of God his identity directly streams from God and the reason is because he is born of God. In James 1.18, he said, Of his own free will, begat he us, that we will be a type of the first fruit of his creatures. So, when you ask you, you are asked, who are you? You have confidence that you are of God because he begat you. You are not a stranger in the kingdom. You know, many people come praying. When you hear them pray, you know they don't know they are children of God. So a child comes to God and is, is begging God, please Lord, if you are willing. What do you mean if you are willing? You knew the will of God, that's why you came to pray. And then imagine if your child came to you in the morning and said, Daddy, please, is there breakfast? Daddy, please, can you help us with breakfast? You would be like, are you okay? What do you mean help us with breakfast? But when a child comes, he says, Mommy, why is the breakfast not yet ready? Because he knows I am part of the family. So a child doesn't come begging, please, is there breakfast there? Sir, can we, can we just have one spoon? That's how many people approach God. So when you see people operate like that, they don't know, they don't have an identity in God. So they don't know that they are the children of God. And when you pray, the devil watches you. If the devil knows you have not found your identity in God, then he comes to buffet you. But when a child comes to the father, he comes with assurance, this is my house. This is everything the father owns belong to him. That's why in Romans 8, 17, it said, if we are children, then we are heirs. And if heirs, it said we are heirs of God. What does it mean? It means a child have inherited the father. So the inheritance of the child is not just what the father has. It's the father himself. That's why the child has total assurance. He's never afraid. And the only way you can know this is to know that you are born of God. I am not part of God. I am born of God. If you tear me apart, what you find is God. That's who a child is. If you don't know this, when God gives you an assignment, you look at yourself and you say, ah, I'm insufficient. You have not found your identity. If God tells you today, you will take the whole of South Africa. Thank you, Father. Because I know it's not about what I have. It's about who I am. And if I am of God, when I get to South Africa, everything God has that I need is deployed. 
That's who a child is. A child is born of God. And that's why I said, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. He has that with him and in him all the time. Have you heard, when you see a child speaking, you'll be amazed. There is no way a man who understands that he's a child of God talks that you will not say he's proud. There is no way. Because he doesn't know defeat. He doesn't talk defeat. He comes to you, you say, are you sure this will work? He say, why won't it work? He's traveling, you say, have you prayed? Are you sure you'll be safe? He say, I'm the safety of the road. Because I'm there, the jealousy of God is invested. I am the safety of the road. Then you are wondering, why are you so proud? I'm not proud, I know who I am. And when you begin to talk like that, the devil becomes scared of you. Because he knows, ah, oh, this one has found his identity. In Romans chapter 8 verse 32, he said, if he did not withhold his only son, but gave him freely for us, how can he not with him give us all things? So a child knows that all things God has belongs to him. Some people come to God and say, Lord, please, I need 100,000. It will be a shame for me to ask God for 100,000. You don't ask God based on what you need. You ask God based on what he has. Because all things belong to me. So I come to God and say, Lord, I must be worthy. If I'm not wealthy, this world will not end. <laughs> when I talk to my friends, sometimes they look at us and they start laughing. I say, if we are not wealthy, this world will not end. We must be wealthy and super wealthy until we can sponsor everything sponsorable. That's because you know you are a child of God. And when you know you are a child of God, you know all things are yours. That's a realm. That's a realm. The problem with the child is that the child doesn't know responsibility. The child only knows possession. And this is why many people, when they come to church, they are only willing to receive like pastor was lamenting a while ago when it's a miracle service everywhere is filled when it's a breakthrough service everywhere is filled but when you say come for vg let's intercede for nigeria then you know those who are children because they will not come when you say today is street evangelism you will know those who are children they will never come but when you say worship service come let's celebrate children get their dancing shoes because it's always about them you know, you give a child biscuit and you ask the child for the biscuit, he hides it. A child only knows how to collect. So in the kingdom of God, the children are in the consumer generation. God can't use them. If the children of God are many, kingdom will not move. That's why the value and the stature of a church is not in the number. The value and the stature of the church is in the sons that the church has. Not the children that the church has. A church of children is not relevant in God's agenda. Even though God loves the church. It's a church of sons that is relevant in God's agenda. Because children are not oriented towards responsibility. They are only oriented towards possession. So when you hear them pray from January to December, it's God, I want this. God, I receive this. God, I take this. God, I have this. And God will give because the fatherhood of God compels God to be super benevolent. But your sonship compels you to be super responsible. So we can't have leaders who are children. The devil will overrun the purposes of God. That's why we don't stop at that level. See what the Bible says about children. It says, I write unto you children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. So when you come to the body of Christ today, everybody is excited. We have forgiveness in Christ. We have forgiveness in Christ. So they want to sin and receive forgiveness. They are irresponsible. There is a realm in God where you say, sin shall no longer have dominion over me. You have journeyed from a child to a son. Sin shall no longer have dominion. That's not a child. That's an adult. So sometimes when you ask children, they tell you, how do you mean? Everybody sins. Who told you? When John wrote, he said, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven. When he came to fathers, he didn't talk about sin. Fathers don't sin. <laughs> they say nobody is perfect no, you, are, you, are, you are it's in the children realm it's in the realm of children that's where so you talk like that because that's your realm in this world there are those who are perfect they have come to maturity they have power over sin that's why God can pick one man send him to a land to take that land and you'll find out 
10,000 others. You say, why is God not choosing them? When it comes to kingdom, the equation is not predicated on love. It's predicated on maturity. So a child understands the finished works of Christ. He knows that according to divine justice, the wrath of God was atoned for by the mercy of God, the grace of God, and the love of God. So he holds on to the love of God. He holds on to the mercy of God. And that's beautiful. And then you come to many conferences we are only teaching about the love of God and the mercy of God. But we don't teach people to take responsibility. That there is a place in God where love, mercy, and grace is not only meant for provision, but it's also meant for empowerment to advance kingdom. That's the realm of sons. So when you grow from the realm of a child, you become a son. Who is a son? A son is one that bears the image of the father. He bears it. He has interacted with the father until when you look at him, is the father you see. He's an expression of the heartbeat of the father. He's an expression of the bodings of the father. He's an expression of the character of the father. So in 1 John chapter 2 verse 12 to, 10 to 14, he said, I write unto you children, because your sins are forgiven for his namesake. But when he came to sons, he said, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you. You have overcome the wicked one. That's the credential of sons. They are strong. What is the strength of the son? The strength of the son is not natural. That's what I began to teach yesterday. The strength of the son is not physical. The son has found something in God that energizes him to do the will of God. The strength of the son is crystallized by his intimate walk with the father. So a point comes when he learns how to move from himself into God and he lives from God into himself. He steps out of himself, he takes of God and he lives by God. There are many Christians that have not gotten there. It took Abraham 25 years to tap into the strength of God. There are three energy levels as you walk with God and there are a lot of scriptural references that typifies it, like the courts. The courts of God are in three levels. The outer court, the inner court, the holy of holies. If you study the gifts of the spirit, they are split into three. The first two gifts of the spirit is separated by hectares. The next, the next five and then the next two. But I don't have time to talk that. But the, there are three energy levels in God. The first energy level in God is called endunamo. I'm telling you how we win in this life. How we win. Because if you are still functioning by your natural energy, there's a place you will break. So sons have learned how to step out of their natural ability. Your creativity is good. Your eloquence is good. Your beauty is good. Your human connection is good. But if God doesn't alight upon it, there is a point where it will break. Because somebody will have more than you. So a son, by all means, step out of all that he has. And he, he cleaves to all that God has. And then he begins to journey from the energies of God. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. The way they enter into this strength is deliberate. The first energy level of God is called Endunamo. The second energy level of God is called Elutero. The third energy level of God is called Metamorpho. And I will explain it to you. In Romans chapter 4 verse 21, the Bible said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving thanks to God. The word strong there is the word endunamo. So that energy of God, what it does is that it gives you power over your natural circumstances. When you tap into endunamo, nothing circumstantial breaks you. So everything the devil throws at you, you rule over it. The devil can bring people gossiping. When people are gossiping about you, when you are a child, you will go and cry. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. Who is that broken? When you look at them, you say, God help you. I don't have that time. You are functioning from another realm. They can come to your house and drop charm at your door. When you know and do namo, you will step on that charm and you will walk away. And the person will check because they said, after four days, he should fall down. 
on the seventh day you are celebrating your birthday and then they say what is happening he's called and dunamu that's what paul carried when he was beaten by a viper they say oh he's a hideous man even though he escaped the sea his fate has caught up with him paul heard them he removed the viper threw it in the fire and he started talking when they walked for a while and paul didn't die they say this is a god they were right because he's functioning with the energy of god but the way you enter into Namo is fourfold. First, he said, Abraham did not consider his body dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. That's one. So people who walk in Endunamo, they are able to look away from their circumstance. So the circumstance can be loud, but they are able to turn away. The devil wants to get their attention. They refuse to give the devil attention. The devil becomes strong to the degree you give him attention. So when things are happening, the devil expects them to look. When they are troubled, the devil expects them to look. But the son knows. He said, be anxious for nothing. By all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. So instead of the guy looking at the circumstance, he goes to God. After a while, he will leap from earth and enter heaven. So everything they are doing doesn't matter. And when he comes back, those things become most. They are too small for him to consider. He has migrated. He said, Abraham considered not. That's the first protocol of Endunamo. The second protocol of Endunamo is that he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. So I may be there, I'm 35 years, I'm not yet married. And the devil expects me to stagger. But he said, none shall lack her mate. So I hold on to that. I may be sick for a while. And then the devil wants me to die. Then he said, if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in me, he will quicken my mortal body. I may not have money for a moment, but he said, he made him that was rich to become poor so that they through him might become rich. So everything the devil throws at Abraham, Abraham did not stagger. You refuse to stagger. You stand on the word of God. That's the second protocol of Entunamu. What you don't know is that you are entering energy you are entering energy you refuse to consider and then you hold on to the promises of god and the third thing is that abraham he said he was giving thanks to god so even though i prayed and the answer have not yet come the answer have not yet come i come to god and i said i have a very big god who is always by my side a very big god so you think i'm foolish i am building energy I'm building energy I'm building energy so when I continue like that a point come the fourth thing is in Dunamu when God sees that God can't deny himself that's when God steps out and when God steps out suddenly suddenly you know there is always a suddenly he says when the upper room pray suddenly something blows and all of a sudden the things that look like mountains you will look at them and there will be no more. Why? Why? He said that when Israel came out of Israel, the land of captivity, he said the sea saw them and fled. Jordan went back and he said, Oh sea, why fledest thou? Oh Jordan, why goest thou backward? And the earth itself was reasonable. He said, let the earth tremble at the presence of God. Let the earth, when God rises, everything goes down when god steps up everything bows even the mountain can skip the sea can go back it will go against his protocol the reason is because endonamo has come endonamo that's the way of song they labor to tap into that energy and when they find it oh when they find it they become lords over circumstances so the guy can go anywhere if he goes to a wilderness it will become a fruitful field abraham was like that because he found them to know more. he said in isaiah 51 he said hacking unto me all ye that love righteousness he said look unto abraham your father and unto sarah that body i called him alone and i blessed him and he said the lord shall comfort zion the lord shall comfort our waste places he will make that's in Dunam. he will make the wilderness a fruitful field so nothing is at a disadvantage to you anymore all things begin to work together for your good. The reason is because you come with the energy of God. That was the same energy God showed up with. And he said the earth was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. God said nothing. He knew he had an energy. It's a creative force. He said the spirit of God hovered upon the waters. He hovered. And when God was ready, he said let there be light. And Dunamo is the power to command.
that's what sons carry but for them to enter they journey in the spirit let there be light there was light you can come somewhere and they say death is in the family until endunamo comes when endunamo comes you can come to the family and say i command death go back you are not talking it is the energy of god even death knows he will go back even death knows he will go back when they major in teaching christians the things that make them weak teach christians the thing that make them fearful they are not helping them you can't grow you can't grow by hearing about powers of demons you can't go about you can't grow hearing the exploits of devils you grow by learning the spiritual technology that makes you strong so i refuse to consider i hack into the promises of god and i keep giving thanks even in the midst of the storm because i know not too long god will show up job say i look to the ends of the earth and my redeemer my redeemer live it my redeemer live it so even when he was full of sores he stood his ground and when the energy of god come the mountains will skip that's why i say he makes all things beautiful in his time that's the way of sons they carry an energy that is not of this world the second energy is called elutero elutero is the escape from the powers that be that's what makes men invincible he said in romans chapter 8 verse 21 that even creation is tied under the burden of bondage of corruption he said but creation is awaiting deliverance the word deliverance is the word elutero it's another energy it's an energy a man gets to where nothing can trap him he says as the wind blow it thou listest not from whence it cometh or where it goes he says so are they that are born by the spirit of god you enter into an energy that makes it impossible for you to be trapped so when they plot against you somehow that thing that was meant to bring you down that thing has been plotted but it carries you up they don't know you didn't do anything they planned something they plotted something that should destroy you but that same thing they plotted takes you up. That's why I said the princes of this world, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It's a force called the Lutero. It causes all things to lift you up. So a point comes, you don't know disadvantage. When they do evil, you go up. When they do good, you go up. When they do nothing, you go up. It's a Lutero. But the way to enter a Lutero is by yielding to the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, it says, Now there is therefore no corruption to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He said, The law of the Spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus has set me free. The word set me free from the law of sin and death is the word Elutero. So the way to enter Elutero is by yielding to the Holy Spirit. So in Elutero, intimacy makes us to become one with the Holy Ghost. This is how we grow in the kingdom. A point come when it doesn't make sense but the holy ghost say go right you are seeing all your advantages in the left go right in fact men who have mastered this they are not moved by nothing that was what lot did not know abraham he said our men are contending with themselves so let us split ah if abraham says split won't you lie down and beg you don't have a lutero it's abraham that has a lutero how will you depart from abraham and lot gazed at the land and he saw the plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he said, I will choose here. Because he's seen in the natural. A man who functions by Lutero. When he wants to see, he looks up. He doesn't look right or left. He looks at the spirit. And when he sees where the spirit is going, that's where he goes. If he goes there, no matter how bad he seems, at the end of the day, he will come out victorious. And Lutero is what makes men invincible. But a Lutero is a function of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. That's why you may look as if you are rising. If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Ghost, it's a matter of time. I have seen men that were powerful, seemingly powerful, but in this same world, they became nothing. Because that power that makes a man invincible and finishes strong is in the Spirit. So sons know how to yield. The strength of a son is not in his creativity. The strength of the son is his ability to tap into the Holy Ghost part time. So every time the Holy Ghost moves, he knows. That is why David was able to fight 44 battles and he won all. How? He said, when you see the mulberry tree move, I have gone ahead. 
and David said by God I ran through a troop by God I leaped over a wall there was an ability he could pick the frequencies of God and as long as he's heeding God no force on earth could bring him down David can win war with stones he can win war with bows and arrows he knows something it is in that his, his pliability in the hand of the Holy Ghost that he became a warrior and when David wanted to train his warriors he didn't take them to a query site David was only playing his harp and when he played his harp he downloaded sounds from heaven those sounds altered the molecular structure of his warriors and they changed he changed them with sound. he said by my harp I altered dark sentences he had leaned and aligned with the Holy Ghost so much that David could bring heaven to earth with sound so when David is playing his harp, it is the heart of the father. And when you hear David, after a while, your hands will become strong. You may be feeble. They said 400 broken and battered men came to David in Kevadula. How did he make them? He made them by the spirit. He didn't train them by the mountains. He made them by the spirit. When David plays his harp, he trains warriors. Because that time they are hearing that sound. They are lying with heaven. It's called Mahanai. Mahana. So one man can see an angel of fire. And as he's walking, that angel is teaching him. Another man sees an angel of sound. Another man sees an angel of light. That's why when you are worshiping God in your room, a point comes, you find yourself. You are behaving, you are just misbehaving. You don't know what's happening. They are altering your molecular structure. So that time you are shaking your hand. It's an alignment pattern. That's the power of a Lutero. It's an alignment. So you, you pray for one hour. And when you walk up, you were coordinated sitting. But after prayer, you found yourself facing the wall. You didn't know how you came here. It's a Lutero. It's a Lutero. And when your molecular structure is changed, a point comes when you see somebody living in sin, you say the wages of sin is dead. And the person begins to cry. He doesn't know. You are now talking from heaven. You are talking from Zion. That's the way of sons. The power of a son is mystical. That's why you can't bring him down. I write unto you sons because you are strong. You are strong. You are strong. If you are not strong, it's because you have not yielded. When you yield to the Holy Ghost, there's an ability that comes on you. Oh, I love it when I pray alone in the room. Sometimes I'm so tired and I carry a chant and I put it and it begins to play. After a while, my head begins to shake. After a while, I stand up. I begin to walk. After a while, I begin to run. I don't know what's happening. That time, I'm running in the room. I'm moving from one state to another. And people are wondering, how are they inviting you? How are they knowing you? When I was running in the room, I was leaping from one territory to another. I was leaping. I was leaping. It's called a Lutero. In my room, is a mystery, but I'm jumping from state to state. I'm jumping from territories to territories. Sometimes, as I'm in the room, I roar. roar. What that means is to take territory. So when I enter a territory before I come, the place has been subdued. The demons will roar. Because when I was roaring in the room, I was commanding territorial demons. Get out of the city. It's called a Lutero. That's why the way of the spirit is mystical. You can't find it as the wind blow it. Thou listest not from where it's coming or where it going. So are they that are born by the spirit of God, have you not been praying before and you got drunk and then you were drunk in your room and then you were just moving and in that drunken state you know what you should do and then you do it all of a sudden the contract you were bidding they just called you and say come and take that project that you didn't have wisdom for you are trying to draw the building plan you can't get inspiration and suddenly you were just drunk and as the holy ghost was carrying you he now took you to where god stood when he created the foundation of the earth there's no architectural intelligence that supersedes that but by you you entered somewhere and when you come out you'll become a champion you will not only draw one building plan you will draw ten and when you draw it for 20 years for 100 years nobody can beat it because you do it from the foundation of the earth is the power of songs i write unto you young man you are strong you are strong you are strong when god say you are strong he's not talking power and might he's talking the way of the spirit the way of the spirit that's the way of songs oh, yeah. oh, 
choose a stammerer and say go and talk for me because you don't need eloquent men you need men that know Elutero a Tamara can talk and his voice become the voice of God do you see why God chooses men that don't qualify somebody is weak and vulnerable you see a four men is it this one what will you do you don't know you are seeing the wrong thing because it's not this frame it is the workings of Elutero that person you are talking to he has married the Holy Ghost. So when you think nothing will work, the person enters his bedroom. And then you thought he went to sleep. No, he didn't go to sleep. He went to heaven. Because his bedroom is a potter. When he enters the bedroom, all he needs to do, give him two hours. When he comes down from the bedroom, he will mystify. Hello, my Kaseva. Erono Fakaya. And you know, demons know these things. You may not look like it, but when you come and you carry it, they know. They know, they know. When Jesus entered the synagogue, suddenly they saw him and they began to say, Son of David, why did you come before your time? They know he has entered the Lutero. And when he shows up, he becomes like a fire. He becomes like a light. Because he becomes an effulgence of God. Who told you you are disadvantaged? What you need is to learn the way of strength. You know, this Christianity of doing everything for everybody is what has weakened the body of Christ. So you want to travel, you need a prophet to tell you. You want to buy something, a prophet to tell you. What has happened to your work with the Holy Ghost? Where is your Elutero? Who told you the prophet will always be there? That's why many Christians are babes. But the season has come when men will mount up with wings like the eagle. They will mount up. They will mount up. They will ascend to Zion. So when we come out, we become different dimensions of God. That's Christianity. That men can be carried by the Holy Ghost. The prophets of old, they did not have the Holy Ghost, but they knew this. He said, I was carried by the Lord to the mountain of dry bones. And he said, Son of man, can these bones live? He said, Thou knowest. And he said, Command the bones to live. And he said, I commanded, I spake as I was commanded. And suddenly, a mortal man began to talk to the wind. He commanded the east wind to come and fill the bone. And the wind began to obey him. You can come to a place where you need money and you command the wind to bring money. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know how men rule this world. How do you think a man goes to meet a herbalist and he tells him, start selling pure water? How many pure water will you sell to be a millionaire? But there are weapons that you can't see. Oh, wind! Hyena, Ferona, Kaida, Abotaka, de Gazoa. When Saul fell, David came. He didn't blame soldiers. David was blaming mountains. Is a cost be the mountains of Gibor? Why did you stand the day the Lord's anointed fell? That means David fought with mountains, David fought with the wind, David fought with trees and with fires. Because when a son enters his reality, everything becomes a weapon, even the water he drinks can become a weapon. That's why he can drink water and drop it. A barren woman drinks it and have children, everything he touches becomes a weapon because the signature of God comes upon it it's called a Lutero oh I wish believers can carry a Lutero and then you enter your office ah, ah, a cleaner in the office of the president can become the God of the president and he can tell the president how to rule the nation if only he can carry something that is spiritual I don't need to go to America but there is something in heaven that if you carry even the Americans will follow you Hello, terror. That's growth to the kingdom.
pastor can never be disadvantaged you don't know who the new creation is it's a dreaded species the new creation if you know what you carry one man can take a city he said philip went to samaria one man he preached christ there the city a city was too small for one man he becomes as tall as the cherubims of glory because he knows the powers that are failed to him and where the world is going these are the powers we must tap into the reason the church is unstoppable is because we live from heaven it was jesus that told john that the candlestick you are seeing there are the churches so every church is a light in zion how do you quench it the powers that be they bow and then somebody is struggling over a mundane thing you don't know you are a commander hi 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 it's time to look away from yourself and look unto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith you are not weak no you are not disadvantaged you have just not worn your garment your weapons are lying fallow you are not weak pick them pick them pick them you'll be a wonder isaiah knew it he said i and the children the lord has given to me we are for signs we are for wonders he said say unto joshua and the men that sat with him they are men greatly wondered at. why do you think jesus didn't say we should what do you know what it means to to handle a cancer patient do you know what it means to handle a hiv patient and jesus just said touch them so your touching is in, is more efficacious than chemotherapy you touch a cancer patient and cancer dies do you know how many doctors it takes to attend to a cancer patient somebody has a heart complication he didn't say go and pray he said touch him what do you mean what is it about your touch because when you touch god touches he says stretch forth thy hands so your hand become the hand of god that is a lutero you touch a cancer patient and you touch a a heart a, a person a patient with heart contradiction and in a second what a trained professor a trained professor of medicine and surgery cannot do your one second touch does it does it not amaze you who you are do you know how many years it, you need to train to be a consultant surgeon that's the creature that we are talking about but men need to grow into it men need to grow men need to grow and if somebody's desire is becoming stronger pray in the holy ghost let something touch somebody now growth in the kingdom is not time based it's process based in the name of jesus god needs sons in the polit in politics but there are not people who run back and tell prophet what should i do no there are people that can connect heaven from where they are god needs men in the economy but there are no men that come to ask prophet what should i do there are men that can touch heaven so that the government and the systems of this world will become the systems of our god that's why he's sending men everywhere daniel was in babylon according to church history for 65 years it was relevant how there's a god that reveals a secret there's a god this is a eunuch he was supposed to be useless in society but he tapped into something and the bible said even the king wanted to make him
president over the realm. A point came, he became a wonder. And the queen came and said, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. In whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. He has the power to explain hard sentences. He can confound men and he has wisdom that dwells only with the cause. The people we need in politics are men with an excellent spirit. When they speak, the system stands still. But there is a power that makes it happen. You must find it by stepping into God. So our politicians will become apostles and prophets. Because when they go to politics, they are bringing kingdom by supernatural power. We need men that can look at the stock market and when they look closely they know what to do in three years today to stay ahead so while others are going this way they say no buy this buy this buy this how did you know i don't know how i live in heaven that's how the church we take over we don't take over only by praying in church we take over by going into all the walls but how are we going there we must go with power Tarry in jerusalem until you are endued with power there is a power that rules the economic world there's a power that rules the political world there's a power that rules the academia that's the power we need to enter but it's by yielding to the holy spirit ah somebody's been anointed somebody's been anointed for wealth somebody's been anointed please stay sensitive Please stay sensitive. Somebody has been anointed for wealth. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, even as I speak, Father, let that grace rest on that one now. Touch. to pray and we teach men the word of God it's not about the pulpit today every young man on the on fire is an apostle he wants to preach the pulpit is the smallest place to stand God these men in government God needs men in economy the reason we drag them here is because they need to be equipped to go and conquer those mountains with God the church of the last days an army is not a church of a superstar we have 1,000 people lined up to see one man no everybody will know God for himself everybody will be taught the ways of God So that sons can be born. I'm out of time. I wish I had time to tell you about who a father is. I write unto you young men. Because you are strong. The word of the Lord abides in you. And you have overcome the evil one. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ask God for strength. If you pray desperately. Something will come on you. That's the generation that we are waiting for. He said the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. He waited. Varodia Tamana, Elekazozi Atavalino, Arodagaya, Belonde Vanai, Nazuzafa Katai, Berodagadia Donose, Anto Caparede, Aruada Tabai.
Maroka TV Eyo lololi atenayo Afu dada kuzatida Bato valianda dorakwa Ezo zode Tatale Pray Step into something tonight Step into something Arokayando vedatai Your destiny is too precious to live in the hands of another Contain tonight Takaya Takaya Nothing is permitted to die in your hands You have the life of God in you Oh flow River flow Let it down oh river flow In your church Once again let it on it be seen. River flow, river flow. Let it on the river flow. In your church once again. Let it on it be seen. River, river flow, river flow. Let it on the river flow. In your church. Once again, let it on it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, see when we tell people to pray, when we tell people to fast, when we tell people to study the word of God, it's not an attempt to be spiritual or super spiritual. We are bringing you to where your advantage is. When this dimension begins to break out of you, everything you do takes your word. It takes your word by storm. Because in the spirit, laughing is a weapon. That sister laughing now is something resting on her. That's the power to dominate territories. He said, why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? He said, the kingdoms of this world, the, the kings of this world, they take, they take counsel against the Lord. He said, but him that sits in the heaven shall laugh. And he shall vex them in short territory. When God laughs, it's a territorial dimension. Everything becomes a weapon. People are trying to bring you down in your office. And then you go to pray. When you ascend, you just start laughing. <laughs> and then you scatter them in the office. That's how we rule. Dancing in the spirit is a weapon. Singing in the spirit is a weapon. So the goal is not just to pray. Say, I prayed for five hours. I prayed for six hours. What did you tap into? Because the goal is to step into something. It's to step into a dimension that gives you territorial dominion. That's why we emphasize this thing. And when men run from prayer meetings, when men run from work meetings, they don't know they deceive themselves. Because that's where the secrets lie. Tonight, God wants to recruit men yet again. The political corridor is empty. There are no sons. The economic corridor is empty. There are no sons. The media world, there are no sons. He was sharing earlier. If you invite the video, the whole of this street will be blocked. Because they know these things. They know them. They don't need be boards. They will, you will just hear that is coming, and they call them superstars. Meanwhile, we are the real stars. But there is no influence. There is a grace for influence that God will release on somebody in this service. The influence is so strong. Is so you know the Bible said, whatsoever he doeth 
shall prosper things are not permitted to die in your hand it may not be working until you come when you come it starts working because you have the power and the force of creation those are songs because i'm out of time i want to make a call you want to surrender everything to the lord everything and say lord i want to be a puppet in your hand use me for your glory run out these are the people god is looking for Use me for your glory. I don't want to hold back anything. Take it all. The Lord waits for you. Ah. And those watching on the internet, you can make the same commitment because it's not about church. It's about the government of God having rulership over your soul. Ah. Ah. You know, I know the purpose of this meeting. That's why I'm keeping it the way I'm keeping it. I've not prayed for the sick. I've not prophesied. I've not moved in the power of God because the purpose of the meeting is to rekindle the fire for God. Is to provoke a revival in your spirit and to trigger a commitment, total commitment to the Lord. That's my assignment here. And I'm staying true to it. Because we are not superstars. We come to do the mandate and the biddings of God. For those of you who have come out now, there's a requirement God will have of you now and make of you now. Some of you right now in your spirit, the Lord is infusing burdens. He's talking to you about prayer. Some of you particularly is talking about night prayers. And some of you is telling you particularly, pray for nations, pray for souls, wherever it be. If I'm talking to you, God is giving you that instruction. So people are receiving different sets of instruction. Some of you, God is telling you now, begin to sponsor kingdom missions. Some of you, God is telling you, pay attention to the helpless. Whatever it is God is telling you now, you're about to receive an empowerment to leave it. That's why we pray for you. For those particular instructions God is giving to you, that you may receive the ability to express them. Lift your hands toward heaven. Lift your hands toward heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Releva haliato azete gefone talavande arigabata talagadia. Are le 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 ero kadai 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 barak sonataya Some of you will receive a fresh baptism of the spirit now There's a difference in being filled with the spirit and being baptized in the spirit Being filled with the spirit means the holy ghost is in you being baptized in the spirit means you are dipped into the holy spirit there are two different things you are filled with the holy ghost so you are born again the life of god is in you but when you are baptized in the spirit you are empowered for the kingdom assignment baptism means to be immersed so being baptized in the spirit means to be dipped and some of you will be dipped in the holy spirit now father let's just take calm you can stop playing I don't want it to be emotional. It's a heart connection thing. 
Father, look upon this one that have come to make commitment. Young and elderly. But it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God. So right now I ask, the measure of the spirit that is required to furnish the requisite baptism for this assignment, let that major come upon them now. Don't worry, just be quiet, be calm, and allow God to, to baptize you. I don't want it to be emotional. The Lord will start touching you. Some of you will start speaking in tongues. Some of you will feel sensations on your bodies. Don't be, don't, don't be distracted. Just thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you will step into dimensions of encounters. While you are yet standing, your eyes will open. You begin to see things. That's where your advantage is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please help us. So let's keep the... Thank you, Holy Spirit. The baptism has begun. It's not emotional. That's why I stopped the sound. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody is receiving a weapon. Your hand will begin to burn. It's a weapon. It means you are a healer. As you step out, you will cause sickness. You will appear in the realms of demons like a god. In the name of the Lord Jesus, receive that baptism. Receive it. Receive it. Meliavo de Kaziz. Kadiavo Elekanaya. Radosia Fada. Somebody's heart is becoming heavy. God is enlarging your heart. God is enlarging your heart. He's giving you power over territory. Power. 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 It's an ordination. Step it. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm seeing somebody with a rod. It's a scepter of authority. It's a scepter. appear in the spirit and he said he's giving men authority to bring one term societies on their knees before the cross you may not have gone to a bible school and i'm not talking against it it's very good but there is a grace coming upon your life to be able to paint jesus to a generation a grace is coming a grace is coming some of you are not even in front i'm seeing some of them at the back the cross the power of the cross is appearing to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The hand of God comes upon you strong for this end time mandate. For this end time mandate. For this end time mandate. I'm about to go now. But the fire of the Holy Spirit is coming on three people. I'm about, please, don't look, don't, just be sensitive, please. Please. Just be sensitive. I am, I'm not like this on a normal day. But I want to keep it calm because I want something deep and lasting. The fire of God is coming upon people and one of them is around here. Where I'm standing now. Father, let that fire rest now. Touch! It's coming on three people. Fire. A fire. It's a fire. 
It's a fire. It's a fire. You can't hold it. Holy Ghost, touch. into higher realms of encounters. Somebody is receiving a baptism for hunger. It's the dimension of Enoch. But you will walk it. You will walk it. Because you are about to begin to walk with God. It's a part of intimacy. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, that one that has that grace, take it right now. servant to speak over your life. I'm seeing two people here. There's a grace of influence. Very strong. One of you is in politics. Another is in real estate. It's a mighty grace of influence. That scepter is moving here. Is there anybody here? In, in, you do something that has to do with real estate? You? Okay, come. I'm feeling that grace is here. And is there anybody here connected to, a, to politics? You are doing something with leadership. Come. Come on. I'm sensing that there's that grace ho is hovering here. I bring influence. <laughs> influence. <laughs> Fresh. Yes. Power of God. Separate, may eat your spra afara bospre a shenta fee, may Iano spre a few on spra asa frafa fee carafas, may a shame, may you space, may ya feel spra heferose, may in crossmer and for liquor for sea, may Ianses the fish, may a nicra sambe, my eyes, my eyes, my eye may a shankra sala frefe, my Iana no supele crantori and nanka be on sate, may a swan. For Ramon of Safele Cray, me Ionus me ele crecati and Anglo Caligra Gaia, ma asoso pananta reke, me eyana nanke sale fera durosa, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things are prepared to do in your life. In the name of our Lord Jesus, our Father, we thank you. Our God will give you praise. We honor and we worship you. For everyone standing at the altar this evening, we ask, Father, for fresh grace. We pray for renewal. We pray for deep in the spirit of our Father. A fresh baptism of our God in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for a fresh retooling in the marketplace of our God. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Every cloak, every veil over the faces of your people. Our Father, we thank you because they have been removed.
moved in Jesus' name. They begin to see things they could not see before. They begin to hear sounds from heaven, our Father. They begin to hear the voice of the Spirit of God. They begin to see into the Spirit our God and our King. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I see yokes destroyed. I see chains broken. I see men working in liberty and in freedom. I see men dancing in the Spirit, not just because of what has happened, but because there's a new sound in the realm of the Spirit. And they're connected to that sound and dancing, even to the sound that they hear in their spirit. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, Kala says, May Anka Sasaferios, May Eyana Nasaferike Nan Society, Me Ianos Be Eswaferike Nan Sai, Me Ianos Sopala Paka Fele Dia Ka, Ingo Sai Mandu Sopali Geda, Ma Anka Sasa Salia Nasekeri, Ma Anto Seferifike Da. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Do not be afraid, saith the Lord. Do not be afraid of the responsibility. Do not be afraid of the responsibility. I, the Lord, have called you. I, the Lord, will grace you. In the mighty name of Jesus, who is that person? Do not be afraid of the responsibility. For I have called you, saith the Lord. I will grace you, says the Spirit of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, the grace of God comes upon you. The grace to do, the grace to take on responsibilities. The grace to do what you could not do by yourself. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fear is taken away the cloak of fear is taken away the cloak of fear is taken away you're entering into a new dimension into a new season it's a season that will take you to heights untold in the mighty name of jesus thank you father thank you father we give you the praise oh god we give you the praise oh god we give you the praise oh god we give you the praise our father for you are worthy. Can we lift up our hands and just begin to thank Him? Let's begin to worship Him. Let's begin to glorify Him. Let's begin to magnify Him. He deserves all praise. He deserves all glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can we lift up our hands and just say, Lord, here am I. Use me. Use me to whatever extent, oh God, I'm willing. Use me to whatever dimension, oh God, I'm willing. Use me, oh God, as you so choose, wherever, our oh Father, I am willing. I'm willing to go where I, would, I didn't want to go before today. I make a turn around, God, I am willing. I am willing. I am willing. Use me, oh God. Use me, oh God. Anytime, any day, anywhere, anyhow. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Anytime, anyhow, anywhere, any day. Use me, oh God. Use me, oh God. There's a special grace, a special grace to be used by God, even in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anyhow anywhere any way anytime use me oh God I make myself available to you my God I make myself available to you oh God in the name of Jesus thank you eternal God if you believe and you know that your life will never remain the same again you know that beginning from today you will be an instrument in the hand of God to bring down kingdom of darkness, you be a shining light to your word, to your sphere of influence, to your environment, wherever you go. Come on, let me hear you clap those hands together as you return back to your seat. As you return back to your seat, in the mighty name of Jesus, the yoke is broken. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, if you're seated wherever you are, you can be seated, but just begin to pray in the spirit. As you sit, just begin to pray in the spirit. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Close your eyes. Connect to Him. Don't look around. Close your eyes. Just connect to Him. As you sit, close your eyes. Connect to Him and just begin to pray in the spirit. Just begin to pray in tongues. Begin to pray in the spirit. As you begin to pray, fresh direction comes your way. Fresh direction comes your way. Masikras, Maya Feles, Me Inglas, Afeligios. Ma ancre se fele di anancre, ma anchiano suacar fali cres, mi enthicla sua fere fecelianus, mi enchias a safare salio, mi englas a ferimundo se, ma aki colosam mancranda licras, 
vivikosofra anthaligre sayem ma angios me iolos me erafeleli mengrasa foria nose me colo prasa falio se minglo sa foria nanis me ian so falo prosa pele cris yana se feligria nos me eshwa forike langrasa sua peli yana so tali cri o yasas iano sa pala heyanis Yes, the glass of Kilandraskli, glass forest me in Latila Kaya, Yang Supa Labraham Fekele Diosa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just to confirm what the man of God earlier on said, a new prayer mantle is coming upon someone. A new prayer mantle is coming upon someone. A new prayer mantle is coming upon someone. And you know already, you know, you know. So, what we're saying is not just me, God is bearing witness with your spirit. Of something he told you even before you came into the meeting. A new prayer mantle is coming upon your life. And we establish it by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We seal that mantle over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Your ministry, someone I don't know who you are, takes a new dimension. Your ministry takes a new dimension. Ministry doesn't mean working in church. It could be in the marketplace. But your ministry takes a new dimension. I don't know who you are. But you know God is bearing witness with your own spirit. You are the one. And your ministry taking a new dimension, going to the next level. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody you used to measure yourself by your age. You felt you were too young. But God is saying it's not about age. It's not about age. Who is that person? It's not about age. It's not about age. It's not about age. It's not about age. God says do not consider your age. Do not consider your age. Do not consider your age. Where is that person? Where is that person? I'm only confirming what the Lord has told you. If, you were, if you're that one, can I see your hand up? I'm only confirming what God has told you. It's not about age. Today you're stepping out in boldness. You're stepping out in boldness because God is confirming what has been speaking to you about in the secret. You're stepping out in boldness. You're stepping out in boldness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Today's just one of such days like Peter had with Jesus when he was transfigured. And he said, can we just build a tabernacle here? That's how it feels. But we thank God. We give God praise. That God does not just work in the location. God works in us. So wherever we are, the work continues. Amen. The scripture says, is the one who works in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. One translation says that he works in us to give us the power to please him. So he's the one who gives you the power to please him. Hallelujah. What a fantastic God. Wasn't that a word in the season the past two days? Can we just appreciate this man of God? Hallelujah. Oh, church, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Let's honor the God and the gift to us. These two days. Somebody's life has been altered in the spirit and in the natural. Somebody's life and destiny has been altered. Somebody you will be better for read years to come. You make reference to this meeting. That I came into this meeting and God changed my perspective and my dimension. Come on church, let's just honor God's servant. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so very much, sir. Can we stretch both our hands and get married next week? Amen. Especially the married people that God will strengthen him. That God will provide for him all that he will need even in this season. Between now and the wedding date and even after the wedding. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just go ahead and stretch forth our hands towards him and pray for him. Let's pray for fresh grace, fresh oil upon his life. As he continues to minister and transverse the length and breadth of the globe of the nations of the world, that God use this man of God. Use him into deeper dimensions in the mighty name of Jesus. Even for his wedding, our Father, provide all that he will need in the name of Jesus. Nothing he will need that he will not have in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for safety. We pray for preservation. We pray for protection. In the mighty name of Jesus, the enemy will not rear up his ugly head because he's been conquered. He's under our feet in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus will be glorified in this season between now and the wedding date and thereafter. 
in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, for fresh unction upon his bride or his wife to be wherever she is. Lord, stretch forth your hands and touch her as well. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, she will be a willing vessel, a yielded vessel in your hand, oh God. As you use your son, you will use our father in another greater dimension. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' gracious, mighty name we pray. And everyone shout a loud Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you so very much. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. We're going to close the service. Time is fast spent. I don't need to pray anymore. Prayer has been offered. Your life will not remain the same again. The Lord is not just going with you. The Lord is in you, working with you. Every step of the way. Go and take over. Be the light to your world. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. See you on Sunday, two services, 7.30 and 9 a.m. on Sunday. Please do invite someone to church because you are the light of the world. As your light shine, people will want to know the God you serve. Your life has become a living testimony that will be read by all men in the mighty name of Jesus. People will see the Bible in you. When they look at your life, they see Jesus. When they look at you, they are reading scriptures in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance over you. In the name of Jesus, I noticed the ushers that put off, um, um, offering envelopes on the chair. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart, if you want to give, you can give. Let's just take the, um, what do you call it now? The basket. Let's take it to the back. Okay. Okay, you have some there at the back. So on your way, should the Lord lead you to give, please do so. God bless you. Do have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much.